race for speed in military aviation has never been fiercer. Nations are pushing the limits, building jets that shatter boundaries once thought impossible. These machines aren't just about beating flight records, they're the future of air combat. But the question lingers, what are some of the fastest fighters ever developed? What are their capabilities and limitations? Join us as we reveal some of the fastest fighter jets that no one should have ever seen. When it comes to fighter jets, America has always loved going faster, higher, and stronger. Out of all the machines the U.S. has ever built, one jet still holds the crown for pure speed, the F-15 Eagle. Many call it a muscle car with wings, but unlike those big roaring cars of the 1970s, this jet isn't just fast in a straight line. It can twist, turn, and fight with unmatched skill. The earliest versions of the Eagle were powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-100 engines, each delivering 25,000 pounds of thrust. That was impressive for its time, but engineers didn't stop there. The modern versions roar with two mighty General Electric F-110 afterburning engines, pushing out more than 29,000 pounds of thrust each. Imagine that, nearly 60,000 pounds of raw power strapped to a single aircraft. So how fast does this beast actually go? The F-15 can reach speeds of up to Mach 2.5, which equals roughly 1,600 to 1,800 miles per hour, depending on the air temperature. That makes it faster than nearly every other American jet, including some legends of the skies. The sleek F-22 Raptor, which was built to take over from the Eagle, doesn't even come close. The classic F-4 Phantom, which once broke speed records, is slower. The F-14 Tomcat, made famous by movies, is also slower. Even the nimble F-16, the versatile F-18, and the futuristic F-35 all fail to match the Eagle's top speed. Some reports even claim the Strike Eagle variant of the F-15 can push as far as 1,875 miles per hour under the right conditions. No matter which figure you take, one thing is clear. The F-15 is still the fastest fighter America has ever produced. Next on the list is the Sukhoi Su-27 Flanker, a fighter aircraft developed by the Sukhoi Design Bureau in the former Soviet Union. It was created as an answer to the American F-15 Eagle and quickly gained recognition for its superb maneuverability, long operational range, and ability to dominate the skies in air superiority missions. Since entering service in the 1980s, it has taken part in numerous military operations and has become a trusted aircraft for several air forces around the world. In terms of performance, the Su-27 is a remarkable machine. It is powered by two AL-31F turbofan engines, each capable of producing more than 120 kilonewtons of thrust. This immense power allows the fighter to reach a top speed of nearly 2,500 kilometers per hour. It also boasts an operational range of about 3,530 kilometers, making it suitable for long distance missions without the need for frequent refueling. The jet can climb rapidly with a rate of around 325 meters per second and is able to operate at maximum altitudes of roughly 19,000 meters. These qualities made it one of the most capable fighters of its generation, rivaling the very best aircraft fielded by Western nations during the Cold War. Beyond raw numbers, what truly made the Su-27 stand out was its agility. Its aerodynamic design and powerful engines gave it the ability to perform advanced maneuvers that few other jets could match at the time. This made it a serious challenge for any opponent in dogfights, while its long range and heavy weapon load allowed it to operate effectively in both defensive and offensive missions. Even decades after its introduction, the Su-27 continues to serve as a foundation for modern Russian fighter jets, influencing later designs such as the Su-30 and Su-35. Its legacy remains secure as one of the most iconic and respected aircraft of the late 20th century. Moving on to Lockheed YF-12, an iconic aircraft born during the height of the Cold War. It was built as both a reconnaissance and interceptor aircraft. The YF-12 pushed the limits of speed, altitude, and performance, becoming one of the most remarkable experimental jets of its era. It symbolized how far human ingenuity could go when faced with the pressures of global rivalry. The Cold War was a period of fierce competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both nations raced to build the most advanced weapons and aircraft. 
knowing that air superiority often meant the difference between power and vulnerability. Within this context, the YF-12 emerged as a bold attempt to create an aircraft that could outfly, outclimb, and outmaneuver anything in the sky. It was designed to achieve extraordinary speed and altitude, giving the United States a crucial edge in surveillance and defense. The aircraft was capable of flying at speeds exceeding Mach 3, which meant it could travel more than three times the speed of sound. At such velocities, the YF-12 could cross entire continents in a fraction of the time taken by ordinary jets. This speed made it almost untouchable as enemy aircraft and missiles struggled to catch it. Its ability to soar above 80,000 feet placed it beyond the reach of most anti-aircraft weapons, offering a significant tactical advantage. From such heights, it could spot and track threats while remaining nearly impossible to intercept. Yet with such groundbreaking performance came equally demanding challenges. Operating at extreme speeds and altitudes placed incredible stress on the airframe and engines. Every mission pushed the aircraft's technology to its limits, and after each flight, it required intensive maintenance. Technicians had to inspect and service numerous systems to ensure the jet remained airworthy. This high maintenance demand reduced the aircraft's availability for regular missions, which limited its practicality for large-scale deployment. Despite these drawbacks, the YF-12 left a lasting legacy. It served as a vital stepping stone in the development of advanced reconnaissance aircraft, paving the way for the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. Lessons learned from its design and operation influenced future projects and deepened understanding of high-speed, high-altitude flight. While only a few prototypes were ever built, the YF-12 proved what was possible when ambition, technology, and necessity collided during one of the most intense chapters of modern history. Another fierce fighter that made it on this list is the American-built F-111 Aardvark. It was one of the most distinctive aircraft of its era, designed around a feature that set it apart from nearly everything else in the sky, its variable sweep wings. These wings could extend outward for short takeoffs and landings, then sweep sharply back to slice through the air at supersonic speeds. This adaptability gave the Aardvark an unmatched versatility, making it a capable performer, both at high altitudes and skimming just above the treetops. The aircraft was not just fast, it was smart for its time. Equipped with a terrain-following navigation system, it could automatically hug the contours of the Earth, flying low enough to evade enemy radar. Combined with the PAVTAC targeting system, it could deliver laser-guided bombs with precision against heavily defended ground targets. This made the F-111 a central part of the United States Air Force arsenal from the late 1960s until the mid-1990s nearly three decades of active service. Its nickname, Aardvark, came from the South African animal with a long nose and a knack for rooting out insects, a playful nod to the jet's pointed profile and earth-hugging flight style. Yet behind the quirky name was an aircraft that was far faster and more capable than many critics initially believed. Officially, the F-111 was credited with a top speed of Mach 2.65, or just over 2,000 miles per hour but veterans who flew it tell another story. Designed to rush low and fast beneath Soviet defenses, the Aardvark could drop its nuclear payload deep behind enemy lines and then climb sharply, using sheer speed to escape danger. According to weapons systems officer Jim Rotramel, pilots often pushed the jet beyond its published limits, especially at high altitude when the aircraft was flown clean, without external fuel tanks, weapons pylons, or targeting pods, in these conditions, the Aardvark's true speed potential was astonishing. Its limiting factor was not engine thrust, but heat. The aircraft carried a special timer that would activate when the outer skin reached 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Once surface heating became critical, pilots had to throttle back. This meant the aircraft's maximum performance was governed by physics rather than paperwork, and some aviators discovered just how far the machine could be taken. The next aircraft to make waves in the race for speed was the MiG-25. Unlike the YF-12, which remained a prototype, the Soviet-built Foxbat became a true legend, wrapped in secrecy, surrounded by fear, and sparking myths that echoed across the Cold War skies. The MiG-25, later nicknamed Foxbat by U.S. Air Force analyst James W. Doyle, quickly became surrounded by mystery and speculation. 
Many in the West believed it had near magical powers, adding to its reputation as one of the most feared aircraft of its time. The very first prototype of the MiG-25 took to the skies in 1964, and by 1970, it officially entered service. Its development was directly influenced by the growing concern over advanced American aircraft, such as the XB-70 and the SR-71 Blackbird. These planes could fly at extremely high altitudes, far above the range of existing Soviet interceptors. To meet this challenge, the MiG-25 was designed specifically as a high-speed, high-altitude interceptor, able to chase and potentially destroy these elusive targets. The design of the MiG-25 focused on two main features, incredible speed and the ability to reach great heights. Achieving these goals required bold engineering choices. The aircraft was built with a large wing area and extremely powerful engines. Its wings were swept back at an angle of about 40 degrees, a design that helped reduce drag and boost performance during high-speed flight. At the heart of the aircraft were its Tumansky R-15 turbojet engines. Together, they produced a massive thrust of more than 33,000 pounds force. This immense power allowed the MiG-25 to fly at speeds of up to Mach 2.8, which it could sustain without risking damage. While it could push even faster under certain conditions, doing so for too long risked destroying the engines. The MiG-25 was not designed for agility or dogfighting. Instead, it was built like a rocket with wings, fast, powerful, and deadly at high altitudes. Its purpose was straightforward, to meet intruders head-on before they could carry out their missions. Though later aircraft would surpass it in some areas, the MiG-25 made history as one of the most iconic interceptors ever built. It stood as a symbol of Soviet engineering during the Cold War, proving that sheer speed and altitude could be as important as maneuverability in the battle for control of the skies. Moving on to the XB-70 Valkyrie, this extraordinary jet was capable of reaching supersonic speeds as high as Mach 3, a performance few aircraft in history have ever matched. At such an incredible pace, the plane was designed to do something remarkable. It could ride on its own shockwave. This engineering achievement allowed it to sustain tremendous speed while maintaining stability in flight, a feat that pushed the boundaries of what aviation technology could accomplish during its era. To handle the extreme heat generated at these high velocities, the aircraft was not built like an ordinary jet. Instead of relying on traditional aluminum, which would have softened under such thermal stress, its creators turned to advanced materials. Large portions of the plane were constructed from titanium, chosen for its strength and resistance to high temperatures. Even more innovative was the use of brazed stainless steel honeycomb structures. These honeycomb panels provided an exceptional balance of strength, lightness, and thermal protection, ensuring that the aircraft could endure the intense heating that occurred while flying at sustained high Mach speeds. The design reflected not only advanced aeronautics, but also the ambitious vision of engineers seeking to create a machine that could surpass all others in speed and altitude. At Mach 3, every second of flight brought immense stress to the airframe and engines. Without the pioneering use of titanium and the honeycomb stainless steel, the jet would never have survived the demands placed upon it. These material choices demonstrated a forward-thinking approach that was decades ahead of its time and influenced future aircraft design for generations to come. Beyond its materials and aerodynamic innovations, the jet represented the peak of Cold War engineering competition. It was not simply a plane, but a technological symbol, showing the world the heights that human ingenuity could reach. Its sleek form, combined with its ability to ride its own shockwave, turned it into a legend of aviation history. Though only a handful of such aircraft were ever produced, their impact was lasting. They showcased the possibilities of supersonic and near-hypersonic travel and inspired future designers to push further into the limits of speed and endurance. Even today, the lessons learned from this aircraft remain valuable. As engineers continue to grapple with the same challenges of heat, stability, and materials in the quest to develop faster and more resilient machines. Another aircraft made it onto this list in the summer of 1956, when Lieutenant Colonel Frank Pete Everest pushed aviation into uncharted territory by piloting the Bell X-2 to a world speed record. The sleek rocket planes streaked across the skies above Edwards Air Force Base in California, reaching Mach 2.87, more than 1,900 miles per hour, 
at an altitude of 60,000 feet. For Everest, a veteran of more than 150 combat missions in World War II and a seasoned test pilot, this was the pinnacle of a career spent chasing speed. For the world, it was proof that manned flight could survive at the very edge of the atmosphere. The Bell X-2, nicknamed the Starbuster, had been built specifically to probe the mysteries of flight beyond Mach 2. Earlier research aircraft, like the Bell X-1, had broken the sound barrier, but engineers wanted to know what happened when speeds climbed even higher. Two prototypes were built, though only one would fly. The other was lost in a tragic explosion in 1953, claiming its pilot's life, a grim reminder of the risks that came with pushing past the limits. When Everest climbed into the cockpit on that July day, the X-2 was making only its ninth powered flight. Carried aloft by a B-50 bomber, it detached high above the desert floor before Everest lit the Curtis Wright rocket engine. The blast of thrust hurled the plane forward like a missile, and from that moment, Everest's task was as much survival as precision. As he later explained, the pilot had to climb towards 60,000 feet, then carefully level off and even dip the nose slightly to squeeze out every last fraction of speed before the fuel ran dry. At those record-setting speeds, Everest discovered that the X-2 became unpredictable. Control responses grew sluggish, and the aerodynamic pressures shifted in ways that made the aircraft feel unstable. His impression was that as Mach 3 approached, the dangers multiplied, making further flights a deadly gamble. That prediction proved hauntingly accurate. Just two months later, Captain Mel Apt flew the same aircraft past Mach 3.2, the first pilot ever to break that barrier. But in attempting a course correction, the plane tumbled out of control and disintegrated, killing Apt instantly. His death ended the X-2 program, and supersonic research paused until the arrival of the X-15, three years later. This list would definitely be incomplete without the legendary Blackbird. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird remains the fastest jet aircraft ever built, a machine that pushed aviation far beyond what most thought possible. Capable of reaching Mach 3.3, more than 3,500 kilometers per hour, or about 2,100 miles per hour, the Blackbird flew at nearly four times the speed of a commercial airliner. This extraordinary performance made it one of the most remarkable aircraft of the Cold War. Central to its speed were the Blackbird's revolutionary engines and air inlets. At such extreme velocities, air rushing into the engine must be carefully managed. The SR-71 slowed incoming air to subsonic speeds before feeding it into its turbojet engines, allowing the aircraft to operate safely at over three times the speed of sound. When the afterburners engaged, the exhaust produced a distinctive diamond-shaped pattern a visible effect of the shock waves created by its supersonic thrust. In fact, the Blackbird spent nearly all of its missions flying an afterburner, except when pausing for aerial refueling. Flying this fast created intense heat. At Mach 3, the skin of the aircraft reached temperatures of more than 300 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt aluminum. To survive these conditions, the Blackbird's exterior was constructed from titanium alloys, which protected an internal aluminum frame. Even the landing gear had to be specially engineered. Its tires were infused with aluminum and filled with nitrogen, designed to withstand 415 pounds per square inch of pressure, around 10 times that of a car tire, so they would not fail when retracting into the superheated wings. The SR-71's speed and altitude made it an unparalleled reconnaissance platform. It could soar above 80,000 feet and photograph over 100,000 square miles of terrain in a single hour. Designed with stealth features to reduce radar detection, it gave the United States a critical intelligence advantage during the Cold War, surveying hostile territory while outrunning any missile that might be launched against it. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.